Hello, this is Eduardo Suárez. In the first part of the video, I show you how to create a simple and play test program that takes an initial position for the boxes and then places any other boxes following a predefined offset on the X, Y, and Z directions. We saw that everything was okay if we follow a very simple pattern for the boxes. If we start modifying the pattern, let's say we change the box orientation as only the three boxes in here, or if we add additional offset, only a predefined set of boxes. For example, the offset that we need to create the gaps between these uh, three boxes. Or if we invert the pattern formation on different layers, all this will be adding more complexity to the TP program. In this second part of the video, we are going to start from scratch and we're going to make another program that will be able to handle more complex patterns. At this point, you need to have a good understanding of carry programming. I'm going to be using some instructions that I have already explained on my previous videos. So you're going to see that I'm not going to stop to explain some of the concepts that you should already be familiar with. We're going to start by creating the building blocks that we need for our new Palette LC program. We're going to go to parts. You're going to see here that I added some parts. We're going to call box one normal. That's going to be the boxes that we're going to be placing in the normal layer as the part information that we see here. And we're going to have the box one flipped. That's going to be the one that we're going to be using for the flip layer. And we're going to have the same for box two normal and box two flipped that we're going to be using later on this video. And all this is just for simulation purposes. Now open the teach pendant. Now we're going to see what is different in here. We're going to see that still we have the position register one as before. And now we have a position register two. That's going to be the start position. We can go to that position. We need to change the shift coordinates. And for this, we need to use user one. And now we can just move the robot to that position. Right. And we're going to do a shift move to. And you're going to notice that this position register two is different from the same position register two that we have in the first part of the video. Time, we are defining this position register 2 with the fixed part of the clamp facing on the corner of the palette, I would say. So that's going to be the first position where we're going to place the boxes, but more importantly, it's going to be the initial option that we need for placing any other boxes. We can go back to the home position. We need to set back the coordinates and use the user frame zero. And we can do a move position register one. Again, and you're going to see that we don't need anything else from here. We're going to have three more position registers. That's going to be position, position register 20. That's going to be the approach place position. We have, we're going to have position register 21. That's going to be the place position. 
and position register 22 there's going to be in the retract place position all these positions are going to be referenced to the palette when we place the boxes we can see something else in here if we go back to position register 2 and we look at the position you're going to see the uh, elements on group 1 that we have the x, y and z your pitch and row but also now we have this option in here for the group and if we click in group we can select the group number 2 and uh, this is going to be the group group number two and in here we have the join number one with the position in millimeters now we go to the registers you're going to see that some of the registers have changed register one that used to be the row index now it's going to be the box index we don't need register number two mm, register number three is going to be still the same the layer index and remember that this is going to be the four loops that we're going to need going through the layers and going through the number of boxes in this case and now we're going to have register number four and six again register number five we don't need it anymore register number four is going to be the number of boxes that's going to be 13 and register number six is going to be the number of layer that for now we're going to keep it to one we're going to minimize this one for now and now we're going to go to files and in here you're going to see all the CARE programs that I've created for this palletizer program. You're going to see the naming convention I'm using. Uh, all the names start with uh, B1 for box 1. This is because later we're going to need uh, another uh, CARE programs for box 2. We're going to start with uh, box 1 pattern definition and basically what we have in here is going to be the as the name implies the definition of the pattern for the boxes and for the layers we're going to define two constant it's going to be num the number of boxes it's going to be 13 we have 13 boxes on the pattern formation and the number of layers that we're going to keep it with one then under type we're going to declare a user defined structure that is going to be box data data is going to include all the properties for the box that we're going to see in a moment then we're going to create another user defined structure we're going to call it layer data that also is going to include the data that we need for the layer we're going to declare to user define data types that's going to be box pattern and layer pattern both are going to be an array of the number of boxes and the number of layer of box data and layer data and finally we're going to declare new variables that's going to be box normal, that's going to be type box pattern we're going to have another box flipped, that's going to be the same type box pattern and we're going to have a layer, that's going to be type layer pattern we're going to come back to this part of the user structure and we're going to see what we have inside so uh, to give you a better idea 
to better explain how this one works, I have a representation here of the pattern formation. We're going to have the palette of e-conveyor 1 with the user frame number 1 with the x and the y uh, orientations. We're going to have the position register 2 that's going to be located on this corner of the palette. And in here, we're going to have the array of the boxes. You're going to notice that in the part one of the video, we have a two dimensional array. We were using rows and we were using columns. But that structure of array doesn't work when we are having boxes that change orientation. So now I change from the two dimensional array to the one dimensional array. And we're going to go from element number one to element number 13. You're going to see that one of the elements that we have in here is the box turn. And we can look at the box turn in the following way. If the orientation of the box I want to place is the same orientation that the box that we're picking, the box turn is going to be false. Like the last three boxes that we're placing here. Otherwise, any other boxes that we change the orientation from the pick to the place, the box turn is going to be true. So if we look at this table here, we're going to have from index number one, are going to be turned, and the last three, 11, 12, and 13, the box turn is going to be false. Then, um, we're going to define something else that's going to be the x and the y dependencies. And basically what this is doing is saying if there is any dependency on the position of the boxes. So we can start making the part information in any way that you want. You can select place this one first in here. You can put this one second in here. You can go with a third in here. You can go uh, one, two, three, four, and then five. In my case, I selected this arrangement. We're going to go this order here, then this order, and finally this order in here. So the first um, box we're going to place is uh, index number one. We're going to say that this one doesn't have any dependency because it doesn't depend on any other boxes that we have already on the palette. This is the first box that we're placing. When we're going to place the box index number two, you're going to see on the acceleration, it has a dependency on the box index number one, because we cannot overlap on the x direction with index number, uh, index number one. We're going to put it after this position in here. And on the y direction, doesn't have any dependencies. When we go to place the box for index number three, on the x direction is going to have a dependency on the position of box in the number two, but again doesn't have any dependencies on the y direction. You can see here how I'm going to construct this table from box number one, index number one, to index number five. When we go to box index number six, on the x it doesn't have any dependencies. It's going to have dependency only on the y direction on box index number one. It's going to be different for box index number seven. It's going to have a dependency on the x direction of index number six and on the uh, y direction on box number two. 
And um, you can see that you can follow the same idea for all the boxes. Finally, we're going to get to number 11, 12, and 13. And number 11 on the x direction doesn't have any offset. On the y direction is going to depend on boxes in the number 6. We could also put an um, index number 7 for box depend on index number 11 and index number 7. Again, could be 7 or could be 8 or could be 9. And finally, for index number 13, it's going to depend on number 12 and number 9 in this case. So we can use uh, this table that we have in here and we can go back to the current program and on the executive section of the program we can start making the assignment for each one of the elements of the variable box normal. So we can go to index number one and follow this table that we have in here and doing the same for each one of the indexes. We're going to have something else that's going to be the x position and the y position. Basically, what that's saying is going to be the position of the corner of the box, as I'm showing here with the with this red arrow. And we, know, we need to know that position to create the offset of the next position of the box. So if this box has a dependency on box in the number one, we need to know the position of the box to place the next box. Same, let's say uh, index number seven, in the number seven is going to depend on six and two. So we need to know the position of this corner and we need to know the position of this corner. And this is how it's going to be handled inside the carry program to start making the, to start building the, the parent position. We're going to go back to the Carry program, and we have two more uh, elements in here. That's going to be the x additional offsets and the y additional offsets. And these are the offsets that we're going to need when we need to create these kind of gaps that we have in here. You're going to see if we go back to the uh, executable section of the program, all the additional offsets are zero except for number 12 and number 13 that I added an offset on the X of 23 millimeter for each one of them. That is going to be the offset that we are adding in here for index number 12 and index number 13. Finally, we're going to have the layers for now, we're going to have only one layer. We're going to start adding layers later on the video. And we're going to have one element that's going to be flipped. In this case, we're going to be working with a normal layer. So flipped is going to be false. And that's all that we need on this box one pattern definition card program. Now we can open the Box one, set position. And this current program, what it's going to be doing is going to define uh, all the place position for the boxes. We're going to create some constant values. We're going to need the same that we had before. The number of boxes, the number of layers but also we're going to need the dimensions of the boxes in the length, the width, and the height. You're going to notice something here that 
if we need to make any changes, let's say we want to change the number of layers, we go from one layer to two, three, four layers. We need to make the same change in both CAD program. There is another way to do that, and it's using constants files. Um, I'm not going to cover constants files on this part of the tutorial. If you want to use constant files, you need to know how to create uh, dictionaries, and that would be a topic for another video. So if you have constant file, you can make a reference in the CAD program to the constant files, and you just make the change in only one place on the constant files, and everything is going to be updated in both programs. Next, we want to we're going to need the variables box normal and layer coming from the box one parent definition. <clears throat> and for that, we need to make a reference to that variables. We need to declare again all the user defined structure and the user defined uh, data type. <clears throat> but in this case, we want to say uh, referring to the um, box one parent definition. We want to create new variables. We're going to be a box number, the layer number, and the start position. The start position is going to be a um, positional data type. And we're going to have a few more positional data types in here. That's going to be the position register place position the position register approach place position and the position register retract place position and then we're going to have a real that's going to be the x offset the y offset and the z offset finally we have a few more miscellaneous variables that they are going to be are going to be the one that we need for um, getting the registers when we go to the executed section of the program we can open the pitch pendant <clears throat> and what I'm going to be doing here I'm going to uh, I'm going to read the position register number two let's go to the position registers I'm going to be reading the start position then we're going to read the register number one and the register number three. It's going to be the box index and the layer index. These are going to be coming from the four loops that we're going to be running on the main program. And then we're going to initialize the position register place position with the start position and I'm doing this assignment because it's a very convenient way to do the to reference the place position because remember the place position is going to have the values for group 1 and uh, group 2 next we're going to be looking at the layer if we are in layer 1, we are not going to add any offset on the Z direction. Otherwise, we're going to add an offset that's going to be the box height multiplied for the number of layers minus 1. And then we need to start making the part of the program that's going to handle the position of the boxes. We're going to minimize this one for now. We're going to come in here. We're going to open the palette outfit conveyor one. We're going to go to parts and we're going to select box one normal and we're going to place the gripper on that position. Okay, so now you can see that 
<clears throat> this is going to be the position where we want to place the first box and basically we're going to have two scenarios we're going to have a condition where the box let's go back we're going to have a condition where the box <clears throat> is turned as in this case or when the box is not turned as in this case so for now when the box is turned we're going to be looking at this part of the program inside the if condition we're going to have another if condition that we're going to be looking if we have any dependencies on the x direction and if we have any dependencies on the y direction if we look at the first box we don't have any dependencies so now the we're going to create the x offset that is going to be zero plus any additional offsets that we have on the x direction for that particular box and we're looking at the box index in this case so we're going to get the information from the box one pattern definition and then we're going to create the x position that is going to be the position of this corner over here that on the x direction is going to be the x offset that we have defined before plus the box width that means that we're moving from this position we're going to be adding the box width and we're going to have the position of this corner on the x direction now when we look at the y dependencies we don't have any dependencies so the y offset is going to be the box length divided by 2 plus any additional offset that we have for that index that means that on the y direction we're going to be placing the fixed part of the gripper the half the length of the box just remember that we are making the assumption that we are picking the box on the middle position and now we're going to have the y position is going to be the position of this corner on the y direction is going to be this offset plus half the length of the box and with this we're going to create our position register base position on the x y and the z position is already defined on the top and the your pitch row we're going to be changing the row so the um, place position is going to be the place position that we have at the beginning it's going to be the start position that's going to be the initial offset that we have in here and to this we're going to be just adding the offset on the x and the offset on the y that's going to be just this position in here and then the other thing that we need to do we need to turn 90 degrees the gripper when we do the position of any other box this is going to be uh, exactly the same idea the only difference is that now you're going to start looking at the dependencies so instead of being on this part of the if statement you're going to be on this part of the if statement and now you're going to be looking at the x position for the index that's going to be referenced inside here so everything now start getting a, an additional index i'm going to be looking at this corner in here for the x and doing the same for the y uh, this is very straightforward so i'm not going to make um, 
more on comments about this, you can look at this one by your own. We're going to look at, for example, any of these boxes in here. These are the normal boxes, they are not turned, so we're going to be looking at this part of the program. Now, um, we're going to look at the dependencies on the X. So, for example, if we look at the box number index 11, doesn't have any dependencies on the X, it has a dependency on the Y. So we're going to be working on this part of the if statement for the X, and we're going to be looking on this part of the statement for the Y. And notice now that the offset is going to be half the length. We can do that for illustration purposes. Let's look at the inbox index 11. We're going to move the gripper to that position. And you're going to see now that the offset on the X is going to be half the length. That's going to be this offset in here. And on the Y direction is going to be the Y position of the dependency plus any additional offset that we're going to have. In this case, the, that is going to be zero. We're going to also be, uh, always we're going to be creating the X position and the Y position for the box index. And finally, we want to assign that to the position register place position. The only difference in here is going to be that we are not adding any rotation. So the row is just going to be in the same position that we have on the start position over here. That's the one that we find in here. Finally, we need to do the position register approach place position. We're going to do an uh, initial assignment with an start position. And on top of this, we're going to add the place um, position register place position on the X, Y, and Z, plus the offset on the Z that's going to come from the layer. And we are adding a, a, an arbitrary number that in this case is going to be 20 millimeters. And then we're going to have the retract position. For the retract position, we're going to go straight up. So I'm not having any uh, additional offset on the X and Y. It's going to be on the C position. I'm going to go back to the same perch position that I have for the approach. And finally, we're going to be writing this one to the position register 20, 21, and 22. If we look back, registers, we're going to have in here the approach position, the place position, and the retract position. A few more things that uh, we can look at. It's going to be in the simulation programs. We have a simulation program for the peak. That's going to be for the normal box. So we're going to pick the box number one normal from the box and field conveyor with a gripper, with a servo gripper. And for the place, we're going to be placing the box number one normal from the servo gripper on the pallet of field conveyor one. And we're going to have uh, exactly the same if we are doing the flip box. So we need to handle that inside the program. And the way that we're going to handle that is using another carry program. And these two carry programs are only for simulations. When you have your reader program on the controller, you, you're not going to need this. We look inside the 
box one pick carrier program I'm going to be making reference to the layer variable that we have inside the box one pattern definition we need this one because I need to know if this is a normal layer or is a flip layer so if this um, if the layer is flipped we're going to be calling the simulation program for the box flip the pick the pick flipped otherwise we're going to be calling the pick simulation program for the box normal and the way that you can call the programs is this way by defining a routine that's going to be the name of the program from the exactly same name of the program and we're doing that for the pick and we're doing exactly the same for the place in this case I'm just calling the place box flip or place box normal we can give it a try so now we can just select the main program again I'm going to be using this notation here it's going to be box one main we're going to open this program in here and you're going to be you're going to see that's very very similar to what we had before the only difference now is when we call the initialize you're going to see that inside we are we have only the register number one and three the registers we are dealing only with register one and register three we're going to call the um, box one pattern definition so we know the um, pattern formation that we're going to be working with and then we're going to have the uh, for loop for the layers and inside we're going to have the for loop for the uh, boxes we're going to call the box one pick that is going to be a tp program and then we're going to move to the position over here over the palette and we're going to call the tp program box one place and everything else remains as we have in the original program the difference is that we clean up um, a lot of things in here if we go to the box one pick we're going to see what is inside in this case we're going to be moving to the bounce position exactly the same that we have here before position number one we're going to go to the position number two we're going to call the b1 uh, pick carry program this is going to be for the calling the simulation for picking the box we're going to close the gripper we're going to wait and we're going to go back to the pause position now to the place and in this case what I'm doing is I need to call the box one set position this is going to be our current program this current program is going to define the position register 20, 21 and 22 so then we're going to move to the approach preposition we're going to go to the place position we're going to call the simulation program for placing the box we're going to open the gripper we're going to wait and we're going to go back to the 
retract place position. And with that, we finish the program. So you can see again that this program is even simpler than the program that we had before. Again, we're going to give it a try. We're going to select the main program. And we're going to do the simulation. This is the index number one. That's going to be the index number two. You're going to notice that I'm slowing down the robot on the place position so you can see clearly how the box is placed on the palette. So that was index number three. Index number four. So everything is going to be the same as we ran for the part number one of the video until we get to the index number 11, 12, and 13. Number 10, and now it's going to need to rotate the box. You see that rotates the gripper. For index number 12, it needs to add the additional offset on the x direction, it's going to be the 23 millimeters. And it's going to do the same for index number 13. But this new palette as a program was able to handle the a change in the orientation of the boxes and adding the additional gap that we need in here for placing the boxes. So this um, video is already uh, longer than I was expecting. We're going to pause in here and we're going to need uh, we're going to make another third part of the video. On the third part, we're going to add uh, more challenges. We're going to change the part information to something completely different. And then we're going to start adding layers where we're going to have uh, flip layers. You're going to see that the cutter program that we're going to be using is um, exactly the same program. The only thing that is going to change is going to be the size of the boxes. And we're going to change also the pattern definition because the pattern definition is going to be completely different as the one that we have in here. And um, this is all for now for the part two of this video.